and welcome to video 6.1. I'm Janet Simmons, and in this video we'll set the context for PBL Scenario C. This video and video 6.2 need to be viewed as a set. While you are viewing and listening, try to identify a variety of problems that you would like to explore. In this video we'll begin to explore meaningful learning and the three modes of computer interaction. We will begin with the analysis questions and finish the video with the synthesis questions. There are four analysis questions for this video. The first question is based on meaningful learning, and the next three questions focus on the modes of computer interaction. So what is meaningful learning? Meaningful learning is essentially the opposite of rote learning, which you most likely have experienced. How did you learn your times table, or perhaps a list of definitions? Meaningful learning is a personal way of learning. The learner connects new knowledge to previous knowledge or experiences. No two people have the same knowledge or experiences, making the connection we make with new knowledge very personal. Dr. David Janensen states, meaningful learning requires a meaningful task, and most meaningful tasks are those that emerge from, or at least stimulated, from some authentic context. When learners wrestle with authentic problems, they are not only better understood, but also are more consistently transferred to new situations because they have more meaning. Jonathan goes on to say, unless learners are required to engage in complex learning, they will develop an oversimplified view of the world. Janensen also states that meaningful learning is often collaborative, since learners working in groups must socially negotiate a common understanding of the tasks and the methods that they use to accomplish this. That is, given a problem or task, people naturally seek out opinions and ideas from others, so conversation should be encouraged to allow for the interrelated, interactive, and interdependent learning. Jonensen suggests that interaction between humans and computers can take on three different modes. Jonensen characterizes this as learning from computers, learning about computers, and learning with computers. Let's explore each mode. Jonensen says when students learn from technology, such as watching an instructional video or interacting with computer-assisted instruction, both the technology and the learners assume roles that can better be fulfilled by the other. Technologies present information as questions and judge answers, all of which humans do better. While humans receive, store, and retrieve information, all of which computers do better. What results in learners is inert, unusable knowledge. At least two approaches have been used in the application of computers as teachers. We're going to briefly look at the Intelligent Tutoring System and the Guided Discovery Tutoring System. Computer-assisted instruction has been around for about 50 years, since the commercialization of mainframe computers. Initially, it was comprised of instructional text with interspersed multiple-choice problems. All students worked their way through the same text and problems. It had two modest advantages over textbooks. Immediately after responding to the problem, the student would receive feedback for his or her answer, and the student's progress was automatically recorded for the teacher to review. Today's instructional engineers are developing intelligent tutoring systems that aim to optimize learning by drawing upon three bodies of information, and that is the domain expertise, pedagogical theory, and characteristics of individual learners. The domain expertise usually includes facts, relationships, procedures, common misconceptions, skills, and strategies used for those who are expert in the domain. Pedagogical theory indicates the ways that learning is generally most effective for given types of knowledge or skills. The characteristics of the learner include proficiencies with the domain expertise, misconceptions about the domain, confidence in their abilities, personal interests, and learning proclivities. An instructional tutoring system generates customized instruction, problems, hints, helps, and feedback, drawing upon these three databases. It usually updates the three databases as a result of the learner's responses, 
thus allowing adaptation of the learner's needs as the tutoring progresses. It usually updates the three databases as a result of the learner's responses, thus allowing adaptation to the learner's needs as the tutoring progresses. It usually keeps track of error rates and sometimes even response delays. Various levels of computer program adaptation may be made in order to adjust the program to the needs of the learner. The first level of adaptation modifies the system to a category of user, such as a teacher or student. The second level adjusts the program to take into account characteristics within the group, such as age and psychological characteristics. The third level uses individual personal characteristics. All three of these levels are used to determine how information is presented to the user as the system supports the learner through a tailored program. There are some major drawbacks to incorporating learning from computer strategies within the educational context. Most of these resolve around issues of the complexity of the programming that is required and the resulting cost in supporting the coding process. However, with the current moves to distributed and mobile computing allowing for cross-platform accessibility, it is possible that this type of human-computer interaction will be fruitful in the not-too-distant future. Computer literacy is all about understanding computers and being able to use them as a tool to assist with common tasks. Desirable skills for potential employees include the ability to adapt and learn continuously. When the requirements for information management and numbers usage are factored in, it is obvious that the ability to learn and use new computer programs without large amounts of help are highly sought after. Computer literacy over the past couple of decades have concentrated on knowing how computers work and operate, some elementary knowledge of programming and use of computer programs. Typically, this has been translated into the ability to use common programs such as Microsoft Office for certain very well-defined and simple tasks. Without the proliferation of technology in education contexts, it is obvious that learning about computers is not a promising avenue to follow. Jonensen said technologies are applications of human knowledge to real-world problems. They are tools for supporting human needs. Computer-assisted technologies such as word processors, spreadsheets, desktop publishing, and computer-assisted design programs all enhance the productivity of their users. Most knowledge construction and reproduction requires producing communications, designing material, or managing resources. Technologies as tools extend humans' functional capabilities. Jonensen goes on to say computers-based technology are also used as information tools. Within a few years, virtually all technical information will be stored online. Literacy for the next generation will require knowing how to use and manipulate these tools to locate and access multiple forms of information. Internet search engines enable increasingly sophisticated search strategies. Learners need to know how to use sophisticated search tools in order to access and manipulate information. Using technologies as context means creating and representing contexts and situations from which learners can problem solve and construct knowledge. Technologies such as case-based learning environments and micro-worlds seek to provide rich and situated problem spaces for learners to investigate while solving meaningful real-world problems. Certainly the fastest growing use of technology is the interconnection of community of learners. Students are now able to converse and collaborate with other students all over the world. Communal learning experiences are no longer limited to students in the same location. Using technologies as social media will increasingly define global learning communities. Other researchers have contributed to the conversation, saying technologies can do more than extend the capabilities of humans, they can amplify them. Using technologies as cognitive tools extends learners' cognitive functioning by engaging learners in thinking while constructing knowledge of which they would not otherwise have been capable. Cognitive tools are computational devices that can support, guide, and extend the thinking process of their users if the users are in control of the computers, rather than being controlled by the computers. 
Computers are knowledge construction tools that engage learners in critical thinking about what they are learning. There are four synthesis questions for this video. You may need to watch this video a few times before you attempt to answer these questions. Please be prepared to share your answers and opinions about this video in our upcoming tutorial. We've covered quite a bit of information in this video. Please see the document titled Video 6.1 Quotes in our Blackboard site to read the exact quotes found in this video. Also, remember to click on the links in our site to read other important works by Janensen. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you soon.